Today we are talking Tsutsumi. Throughout this plane tuning series we've touched on a number of uh, aspects of tuning Japanese planes, but we have not touched on the Tsutsumi. The Tsutsumi is not present in all Japanese planes. If you own a Japanese plane that is say 48 millimeters or smaller, I have never seen a Tsutsumi on a plane of that size. If you own a plane that is say 58 millimeters or larger, you, your plane may have a Tsutsumi or it may not. So what's a Tsutsumi? The Tsutsumi is a small shelf that sits at the bottom of the ramp that holds the blade. It is at a different angle to the block that holds the blade and it mirrors the angle of the bevel as the blade is seated into the block. So what's it for? Some people take the Tsutsumi to be a sign of an extra level of quality in a block because it is harder to manufacture and has shown a lot of care in the processing. It is also considered quite good for stabilizing a blade and reducing chatter in a cut. This is why it's mainly found on larger planes where you have very wide cuts with quite a lot of force in them. However, if you were to read Japanese Woodworking Tools, The Tradition, Spirit and Use by Toshio Odate, you would be able to find that his opinion is that the Tsutsumi complicates the tuning of a plane without having a material benefit. So there are two schools of thought on it. If you own a plane with a Tsutsumi, you almost certainly have a plane that is very well made and a very nice block. If you own a plane without a Tsutsumi, you could well have the same. There is no real, it is not really an indication of quality or not, in my opinion, because in front of me, we have planes all made by Yamamoto-san. Yamamoto-san has an incredible reputation as a maker of professional quality tools. All of his planes are completely handmade. All of the blades in front of me are blue paper one blades, and all of the blocks in front of me are really nice, clear, really well put together die. What are the differences between these two ranges? We have the Teshin Sai on this side and Hikuroko on this side. The difference is the Tsutsumi. The Teshin Sai has a Tsutsumi. Yamamoto-san recommends that the Teshin Sai is appropriate for advanced users, users and people with experience of Japanese planes, where Yamamoto-san recommends that the Hikuroku range is more suited to beginners. Without the Tsutsumi, the, the tuning process is simpler and less maintenance is required of the plane. The reason this is all relevant and the reason I bring it up today is that a couple of weeks ago, a customer who had purchased a Teshin Sai plane from us called us up and said that he had found cracks in his block. We have got that plane back off him, I've had a good look at it, and all of it is related to the Tsutsumi. So today we're going to look at the Tsutsumi and the considerations that it adds to the tuning and maintenance of a plane. So what else do we have to take into account when tuning a plane with a Tsutsumi? This particular customer received his beautiful new plane and he put a huge amount of work into lapping the back of the chip breaker flat. He has lapped the back of his blade, he has sharpened his blade impeccably, it will shave my arm perfectly and he has then covered the blade in pencil, inserted into the block, removed it and paired away the high spots. Here on the base of the plane we can see that we have some areas at the back that still have dark spots on them and the rest has been paired away. However, as you've just seen, this blade can be inserted and removed without ever being held snugly in the block. Even when fully inserted and unable to be driven any further by hand pressure or hammer pressure, it does not protrude from the mouth. It is still half a millimeter to a millimeter away from protruding. The reason for this is the Tsutsumi. What I've done is I've covered the bevel of the blade with pencil and because this blade is so loose, I can wiggle it around and give it some movement as it seats. With that, we can see that pencil has transferred to the Tsutsumi. So below the blade, the Tsutsumi is contacting the bevel of the blade and preventing it from dropping. Without being aware of the behavior of the Tsutsumi, if we continue to pair away behind the blade on the base, we can remove the purchase that the block has on the blade. And if this blade is driven too hard while contacting the Tsutsumi, the Tsutsumi will bow out on the bottom. It will need much more work because the, the timber in here it has a very direct relationship uh, and is having pressure exerted on it directly by the bevel of the blade very close to the surface of the timber. That will need extra attention in tuning the sole. However, in this case what has happened is that the plane has been driven home and the Tsutsumi has taken the brunt of that force. Here on the sides we have the Tsutsumi has cracked out of the block. So we have an issue that we need to deal with. So in repairing this plane, the customer, our customer has added a small dollop of super glue to each of these cracks to stabilize them. And I think that's not a bad thing to do necessarily at all. So what do we need to do to get this plane operating? Well, resurfacing the sole will be one good place to start. Adding in material behind the blade to allow it to bed properly will be another good place to start. However, 
First of all, I'm going to fix up the Tatsumi a little to make sure that it is not holding the blade back from bedding. So how does one do this? Well, luckily, there is an extremely expensive and specialized tool for the job. It is a gooseneck chisel. Most gooseneck chisels are much shorter than this and much longer in the blade. However, this one is tall and short, which allows it to fit right inside the mouth of the plane and sit right alongside the Tatsumi and allows us to pair across the top of the Tatsumi very easily and quickly. You may not want to own one of these for one job on one tool, so we can also do something similar with a straight chisel uh, and pair across the top, scrape across the top of the high points. We're looking for a controlled removal of a small amount of material that allows us to guess and check the position of our blade. So removing a small amount of material, I can see that on one side of the blade, my, my blade is quite close to protruding, the other side, it is not quite there yet. So it seems that one side of the tsutsumi is sitting higher than the other, and I need to remove the high spots from that side of the tsutsumi as a priority. So with a bit of material removed from the tsutsumi, the tuning process can begin. Hopefully you'll be looking at your tsutsumi while you're tuning your plane, uh, while you still have a very snug fit on your blade. So adding pencil to your bevel is a really important process in order to diagnose what's going on down the bottom. So with the high, highest spots of the tsutsumi removed, this blade is going to be able to bed quite close to the mouth. I'm going to finish working on this plane in another, in another video. However, this is my 70 millimeter Teshin side by Yamamoto, and it is a beautiful plane. I really enjoy using it. I have seen 25 of these particular blades sharpened in classes with Takami Kawai when we were making our own plane box with him. So the blades I have seen sharpened over and over again with great results, and this particular plane with its block and its Tsutsumi is a real joy to use. One thing I will say is that Toshio Adate's observation about having to tune, do more tuning work behind the blade, I would agree with. This plane does require tuning from time to time behind the blade as the Tsutsumi bows out. So I hope that's helpful in explaining what that little weird shelf in your Japanese plane is. And I hope that helps you get some great uh, results from your plane. Happy woodworking.